Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Okay, we're back with the final video for episode one of Rabbit's Game On. Um, if you like what's going on, subscribe if you feel like it or don't. Um, I don't do this for money, so yeah, that's that. I do that for I do this for the pure my pure enjoyment of things, things I like to share with other people. Though, subscribing, giving a like, and hitting the little bell does put it out to more people. I'm not going to sit here and beg you to do it. So, if you do, you do. You don't, you don't. You know, it's, it's all good. It's all valid. So, with all that being said, let's get into it. Adam is Yumiko's younger brother. He's married to a really nice guy named Marco. I had a Jane Austen moment and knew that I just had to introduce them. They have great parties to celebrate Cinco de Mayo and Summer Solstice. Yumiko and I had the time of our lives at her brother's Midsummer's Eve party last year. It was, as Harper would say, epic. Understandably, Adam hasn't taken his sister's disappearance and prolonged absence very well. It turns out he did have Yumiko's computer. He gave it to the police the night she disappeared. And when they gave it back, her hard drive had been erased or was broken or something. They said that it had... Okay, um... This is going to be a reoccurring thing where things just mysteriously get broken or disappeared or what have you throughout the series. Um, it's something to keep in your mind and it is it it has a purpose though here in the beginning it's kind of a teaser it does have a purpose it does serve it does serve a purpose and it is paid off eventually been working fine when it left their evidence locker but that they were unable to find any leads or emails that appeared related to her disappearance Adam filed an inquiry, but there was no way to prove the computer had been damaged by the police. I asked Adam if the police had given him anything at all. He told me that the detectives checked the cloud, and it looks like Yumiko, or somebody, deleted most of her accounts. Adam gave me Yumiko's password and login information that he got from the police. I logged into Yumiko's account using my computer and was able to find something on a legacy Dropbox alternative an application Yumiko asked me to sign up for because the developer was a friend of hers. It was similar to Dropbox, but nowhere near as popular. I logged in, and I found something right away. It was a PDF, what appeared to be a scanned page from a notebook of some kind. I'll this is where the, the, the coolness of the story the podcast blended with the rabbitspodcast.com website the notes section this is where it plays this is where it starts to play beautifully how the two start to intertwine with each other we'll upload it to the notes section of our website adam told me later that the police had found the pdf as well but ignored it because it was extremely cryptic and easy to dismiss as nonsense. The file was titled Notes on Hazel. At the top of the page, in capital letters, the word Hazel. Underneath it, in point form, a few other short bits. I'll read them in order. First, is the game responsible for E's death? Two, Hazel is most likely female, then in brackets, per 4chan and the Oxford kid. Three, 
Hazel almost won eight, then just dropped off the map. Four, H, I'm assuming H for Hazel, was the expert on seven and pretty much anything R related. I'm assuming R means rabbits, and the numbers seven and eight, written in Roman numerals, refer to the previous two iterations of the game. That's it, other than a strange sentence at the bottom of the page. A question. Did Hazel know Byron Price? That's a question for later. I have no idea who E might be. But Hazel was, or is, allegedly, some kind of legendary rabbits player who inexplicably stopped playing just before he or she was about to win the previous version of rabbits, the version known as 8. A little adjustment to the camera I've there. been unable to dig up much of anything else on Hazel, but I'm still looking. Who was Byron Price? Well, I had a lot more luck there. Byron Price was a publisher. In 1982, he published a book called The Secret, a puzzle book that, when the puzzles were solved, yielded real-world treasure. Price traveled to 12 unique locations in North America and buried 12 ceramic casks, each of which contained a small key that treasure hunters would trade for one of 12 jewels. So, how were you supposed to find these hidden ceramic casks? Well, you had to match one of 12 paintings to one of 12 verses, solve the resulting riddle, and then dig up the treasure. Simple enough, right? Sounds simple anyhow. Well, apparently Price was convinced that his puzzles weren't nearly difficult enough. He indicated that he believed he'd be giving away all 10 jewels within a week or two. He was a little off with his prediction. In reality, only two of the 12 casks were ever discovered. The first, which had been buried in Grant Park, Chicago, was unearthed in 1983 by a group of students. The second wasn't pulled out of the ground until 2004 by two members of an online search forum dedicated to real-world treasure hunting. I called to speak with Byron Price to ask why his name might be on a list with Hazel. Just to let you know, if you want to have fun, just go down, for lack of a better term, and no pun intended, a rabbit hole. Do a Google search on Byron Price, his book, and the, 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 the treasure hunters. It, the, there's a really good wiki, and there's some actual real-world stuff on it and about him and how that how that played out it's just it's a real interesting real world thing that has been intertwined into the story and it's, it's just awesome once again the, the the i need i feel i need to repeat this over and over again that the writers and developers of this podcast did one heck of a great job on blending fact and fantasy but it turns out, Byron Price had been killed in a car accident in 2005. He died leaving no word or clues as to where the remaining 10 casks might be hidden. Today, the search for Price's mysterious treasure continues. However, in numerous interviews, Price's widow has mentioned that the jewels, which were collectively valued at over $10,000, had been liquidated a long time ago. The only treasure anybody is going to find, if they manage to solve any of the remaining riddles, is a key in a ceramic cask and, of course, the bragging rights. And sometimes the bragging rights are worth more than the actual treasure. The 12 images Price had commissioned for the book each represent a group of immigrants who came to North America from somewhere else. Each image is also linked to that particular month's birthstone and birth flower. Each poem or verse describes where a cask is hidden, but without knowing which poem goes with which image, it's very difficult. I've been looking at this stuff for a while now, 
and it's both incredibly addicting and frustrating. Very I feel much. like there are so many different ways to connect each verse. Stone, immigrant country of origin, and flower. I mean, this stuff is nuts. It's great, though. It's fun. Great exercise. So what does it mean that mind. Byron Price's name was mentioned in the same sentence as Hazel? Well, a series of basic internet searches revealed nothing. But a darknet search paid off a little better. I discovered some text in a comment thread beneath an image link that was, sadly, long dead. So, there was no image. But the comments were pretty interesting. The first of two comments was simply a one-word question. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. The podcast for Tannis goes a little bit deeper into the dark web than rabbits does and it ha and it plays the dark web very very cheeky cheeky is probably not a right word for it but it it plays it very foreboding very secretive well at the same time kind of classic stereotype or stereotype hacker stuff question somebody had posted the word hazel with a question mark this led me to believe that the image may have been a picture of Hazel, a theory that was further supported, I think, by the second comment, which read, Hazel working with B. Price on CD-ROM. Are you getting enough sleep? Casper yeah. understands the importance of sleeping on a mattress before you commit. In one of I the like other that, episodes, especially considering the I fact that we spend a third the, of our uh, lives on our mattresses. The Casper is an obsessively engineered. This is a free, um, uh, free podcast, and this is the ad in podcast ad. So. Well, listen to it and move on. Free in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. But trust me, you're going to love it. It's incredibly comfortable, and everything from the packaging it arrives in to the elegant attention to design detail of the mattress itself tells you that Casper cares about quality. Right now, Rabbit's listeners get $50 towards any mattress purchase by visiting www.casper.com slash rabbits. I don't think that's valid anymore. Rabbits. Terms and conditions apply. Not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high quality ingredients taste better and are better for you. I think so it's important to know where your food comes from. So... As we sit and deal with the, um, waiting for the commercials to pass by, and, uh, the, I know on the, uh, Audible app, or cloud app or whatever it's called on Amazon. I can skip through these. But. Um, it's not real. Um, credible. Not accurate I should say. So. We can. As we get deeper in the series. The commercials are there. But they're not near as long. But that's almost halfway through the season, though. That's blueapron.com slash rabbits. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Back to the show. Byron Price was a visionary when it came to embracing new technology and books. 
He was one of the first to publish both CD-ROM and e-books. He actually won a Grammy in 1985 for his audiobook, The Words of Gandhi. I've been unable to contact his widow to confirm any interaction with someone named Hazel, or anything else for that matter. But I did manage to connect with somebody who had been working on a project with Price just before his death. His name is Conrad Evans. There's a picture of Evans standing with Price at a conference somewhere, wearing some kind of architectural blueprint style jacket and holding some large space age headphones. They look like a good team. The type of scientists you actually believe capable of discovering or inventing something really cool. Hi, is that Mrs. Parker? Uh, Miss Parker, uh, but Carly works best. Thank you so much for returning my call. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. So, um, like I told you in my message, I'm looking into my friend's disappearance. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry to, sorry to hear about that. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I don't have much to go on, so I'm digging pretty deep into everything. I understand. To that end, I found something about Byron Price and somebody named Hazel. Hazel? Yes. Mm. No, I don't remember any Hazel. I understand you were working together. With Byron before his death? Yes, yes. We were working on a series of spoken word audio books and... And you don't remember him ever mentioning the name Hazel? Well, maybe. I don't know. I... Yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago. Of course. Uh, do you... See, when I listen to that part, to me it always comes across that he may be hiding something. Um, we never come back to him, but... It just, the way he answers and how he answers just kind of gives me a feeling he may be hiding something. Remember if he mentioned the word rabbits? Again, he could have mentioned something like that, rabbits or, or, or hazel. Oh, look, look, I don't want to get too much into any of this stuff, okay? It's, and they listen sure. to us now all the time. They? You know, satellites, NFA, CIA, the whole deal. Right. Sorry. To quote good old Spider Jerusalem, a paranoid is simply somebody that has all the facts. Okay, so just to confirm, no mention of Hazel or rabbits that you can remember? No. No, sorry. That's fine. If you think of anything else, anything at all about Byron or Hazel? Or... Yeah. No, if I, if I come up with anything, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye. So, that was Conrad Evans. The stuff with Byron Price was interesting, but I wasn't any closer to finding the mysterious Hazel, or Yumiko. I went back to the studio to regroup. I was researching Rabbits, version 9, when some kind of instant messenger chat bubble popped up. It was called Cat Chat and featured an 8-bit graphic of a smiling cat. The thing is, I didn't install this particular instant messenger app, and yet somehow, here it was, running on my laptop. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It was from somebody calling themselves Concernicus Jones. They typed a message and then sent a photo. The text read, Is she who you think? The image was a half-naked young woman. Her face was cut off. She's wearing a man's dress shirt and suggestively lifting it to reveal the bottom of her bum. She was facing a large window with sheer curtains, probably a hotel room. It could have been Yumiko. The complexion looked like a match, but I couldn't tell for sure. So, I did what any modern investigative journalist would do with a photo. I reverse image searched it on Google and got a hit. And yes, you can do reverse image searches on Google. It's not the most reliable one around, but there's several other different places you can. Um, I was stunned when I found out that reverse image searches were real. It, it just kind of 
I thought that was kind of something made up, but what do I know? Um, I'm just a commentator. <laughs> All right, back to it. It appeared on an escort's website, and there were more photos. There were four photos in total. The one near the curtains with the bum, one suggestive cleavage shot. The woman was pushing her breasts together, wearing the same dress shirt. Another photo, the woman facing away from the camera on a chair, turned back toward the camera, her face cut off again. She's topless with a kind of hand bra, her right hand wrapped around her left breast. But it was the last photo that was the most revealing. The young woman was lying on a bed, a beautiful bed, probably in the same high-end hotel suite as the picture by the window. Yeah, kind of... At this point, the first time I listened to this, I was kind of really, really doubting um, Yumiko's uh, choice of lifestyle at this point. She was framed so her feet, legs, and thighs were the focus of attention. My eyes were immediately drawn to her right thigh. You could see the bottom half of a tattoo there. Only half of it was visible, so you most likely wouldn't have known what it said unless you'd seen it before. It was a phrase, in cursive lettering, that read, Love is the every only God. It was a quote from an E.E. E. Cummings poem. The woman on the bed was Yumiko. Do, 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 do. Next time, we're going to look into how Yumiko and so many others were pulled into the game. It's Rabbits. I'm Carly Parker. We'll be back again in two weeks. Until next time, stay safe. If you enjoy Rabbits, you'll love our other podcast, Tannis. Tannis is a docudrama about an ancient and mysterious myth, perhaps the last genuine mystery of the information age. Download the podcast The Guardian calls compelling and wildly addictive at itunes.com slash Tannis or tannispodcast.com. Tannis. It's television. I find it only appropriate to go ahead and have the outro and end credits just simply because... The people that did who do this podcast did, do these podcasts at uh, PRA and Minnow and Minnow Beats Well do such put are so dedicated and put so much work into it for your ears. Rabbits is a public radio alliance and Minnow Beats Whale production, produced by Hollis Adams Lane. Produced, mixed, and edited by Terry Miles and Carly Parker. Additional editorial and production assistance by Morgan Stevens. Associate producers Tara Pratt and Bailey Everett. Producer Emeritus Mackenzie Howard. Executive producers Terry Miles and Hollis Adams Lane. You can support Rabbits by visiting our website at rabbitspodcast.com and clicking on support in the top right corner. If you enjoy Rabbits, Please rate and especially review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found us. Reviews are key to keeping rabbits on the charts where people can find our show. Thank you so much for listening to Rabbits. For legal and safety reasons, we've elected to change some names and leave others out entirely. We don't do this very often, but we're not willing to compromise people's safety for any reason. Thanks again for listening to rabbits. So there you go. The first episode of Rabbits. Um, I have to say the first time when I first started the podcast, started listening to the podcast, I listened to like four or five episodes, just boom, 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 boom. Just because the way they cliffhanger, it's, it's kind of a cliffhanger, 
but it isn't, but it is. It's just the way they end their episode just makes you want to binge it. Or at least for me, I should say. Um, it may not go for everybody. Um, this is kind of a niche type um, podcast, but it works. Um, and I really, really enjoyed enjoyed it. Um, due to it being summer and I've got travel plans um, through most of June and July, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to episode two, but I'm going to try my best to get start, get it started before I do a lot of traveling. So until next time, peace.